Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. We are in Ezekiel chapter 39, and we are in, um, we're talking about really God's prophetic message or prophecy concerning really the end times. Um, this prophecy will con will happen at the end of the tribulation period. Now, I'm going to indulge myself for just a minute and say, here's my thoughts when we talk about prophecy. Now, I say that because um, I do leave room that I could be wrong, and oftentimes this is my opinion. And, and when I say my opinion, we talk about when, that there's some when will these things happen. But um, my position when we talk about the, what's next on the prophetic timeline, what, what's next on the prophetic timeline, um, will be the rapture of the church. Now, I say that because currently, and I'm going to go back for a minute and use Daniel chapter 9, the 70-week prophecy of Daniel. And like I said, let me, I'm going to indulge myself with just uh, a tad here um, to explain myself. But I want to bring up, I want to show you a image. Uh, I think I can do it with this one here. All right, here's an image. This is one of my images, okay. Um, th this, this is a prophetic timeline. Okay, it is, a, it is an artist's rendition, and um, uh, I'm going to go to a better one. I have a better image here that I'm going to use. All right. All right. This is kind of a better one, I think. All right. Anyway, this, 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 this prophetic picture is found in Daniel chapter 2, and it is a... It was the dream that God had given Nebuchadnezzar. And what the dream was, a prophetic picture, a prophetic timeline, a prophetic um, um, telling of the end times. And what he saw, what Nebuchadnezzar saw was this human statue. And then at the, what you saw, and then the, and we'll, I'll explain then the rock that's at his feet. Daniel give, gave him this exp, the, the interpretation of the dream. That's what he saw, this um, um, image where the head of gold, chest and arms of silver, the belly and thigh of bronze. The thigh should have been bronze right here, so not that the best uh, rendition here. But anyway... And then the legs of iron, and then the feet of iron and clay. So the interpretation of this was that Nebuchadnezzar was the head of gold. Now, first of all, it was five world-dominating kingdoms. that They were ruled the world, okay? And so the head of gold was Nebuchadnezzar, which God said was the greatest kingdom, okay, the most powerful of kingdoms. And then the next kingdom, which was the chest and arms of silver, was the king of uh, the king, the empire of the Mede and Persian. And then the next kingdom after that was the be uh, belly and thigh of bronze, which was the, the kingdom of Greece or the Grecian kingdom. And then the next kingdom was the uh, kingdom of the legs of iron, which was the Roman Empire. Now, those four kingdoms have come and gone. Prophetically, they have come and gone, okay? They were historic, which is, again, kind of interesting that, remember, this prophecy was given during Nebuchadnezzar's time, which then prophecy came to pass with the Median Persians, the Grecian kingdom, and then the empire of the Roman Empire. Now, the next kingdom to arise would be 
the one of feet, the feet of iron and clay, okay, that empire which will rule the earth um, is yet to come. Now, this kingdom will happen or will arise during the Great Tribulation period. Now, also in Daniel chapter 2, I'm sorry, in Daniel, the book, the book of Daniel, chapter 9, actually. I'm sorry, Dan, excuse me, Daniel chapter 9. There was another prophecy given, a prophetic timeline, Daniel's 70 weeks. And the 70 weeks were what God planned and purpose that he was going to accomplish with Israel, the, 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 the people of Israel, the uh, temple, and the city of Jerusalem, 70 weeks. It was a 70 set of seven year periods of time. We, we, we get a timeline because 69 weeks passed and that brought us to the crucifixion of Jesus. So then what was left is the 70th week of Daniel. And then that week is, and we read it somewhat, we read it, not somewhat, but we did read it last time, Matthew 24, when he says, the abomination that makes desolation. When you see that, he says, remember, run to the mountains of Jerusalem, flee to the mountains of Jerusalem. Well, that also corresponds with the 70, 70th week of Daniel, that last week, that last prophetic week. Which means then that what, what, what the image of Nebuchadnezzar, what he saw was that doing the kingdom of the feet of iron and clay, he said doing this kingdom, Jesus was set up a kingdom that will never end. And so in this image that Nebuchadnezzar saw, the rock represents the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus. And he says that you saw this rock that was not made with hand, that was not carved out with hands, and it struck this image at its feet, which gives us a timeline. It struck the, uh, the kingdom at its feet and pulverized the image. Now, the image here is what? Human government, man's time. And from that time, from that point, Okay, from that time, God then sets up a kingdom, okay, that will never end. Then that happens during this time of the feet of iron and clay. Okay, so that, that, so, when, so, when we, so now what we're waiting on is the conclusion, which is the 70th week. So now we have to look at, well, well what happens between the week 69 and then week 70. Well, we know, according to the prophecy, Jesus is crucified. He's cut off. Well, something else happens during this week. Now, it just so happens that this has been an extended time. So now, for the last 2,000 years, we've kind of been in, uh, been between this, this, this week 69 and week 70. So what is God doing so let me, um, uh, again, I, and I said I'm indulging myself a little here. And I want to show you quickly what Jesus is doing uh, between week 69 and week 70. Um, and so let's do this. Um, Acts 1, uh, and, and here Jesus is about to ascend into the heavens. And so in verse uh, it, it, um, verse 6, he says, So when they had come together, they asked him, meaning the disciples, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? Now keep that in mind, because we're going to come back to that when we get back to uh, Ezekiel. Because remember, this is what he's talking about, this it, it, this restoring, what's going to happen, all that's in the restoring. We'll come back to this. Verse 7, he says, It is not for you to know the time that appears the Father 
has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the ends of the earth. So in other words, they ask, well, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He says, don't worry about that. You, you, you go out and be my witness. Now, what is going on during this time? What is happening? What is the effect of them being a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth? Well, I want to share one more verse of scripture before I get back. And this is not a deep dive. Let me also say this, that the reason why this is not a deep dive, if you want a really deep dive on this, I am doing just that. Um, just look at B, BP, the Bible Perspective. Um, and I think on my play, play, uh, playlist, it, it, it has, it's, you know, the, the videos about the end times. And I'm doing one specifically about the rapture, eschatology with the view of the rapture. In fact, I just posted uh, the 40th video. So we're doing an, an in-depth study of this. So um, Ephesians chapter um, 2. And um, here's what I want you to see right here, something that he says right here. Um, Paul is talking to the Gentiles. And again, uh, if you want more details, uh, uh, go to those other videos. Which I, they're entitled The Rapture. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, The Rapture. Uh, I think it's like The Rapture 18 and then just different. Uh, it, 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 uh, the, I mean, The Rapture and you got my, the, the, from 1 to 40. Okay. Um, but um, verse 17 says, when, he, when the Messiah came, he proclaimed good news of peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. So remember, this is what he's doing. Remember, he told them to go out and he preached the gospel. He said, you go out and you preach the gospel. And he says, and when the Messiah came, he preached the gospel. And by the way, this corresponds to the Messiah being cut off in the week 69. And so week 70 hasn't appeared yet. So then he says, for through him, we both have uh, access by one spirit to the Father. So you're no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. And then he says, verse 21, look, the whole building being put together by him grows into a holy sanctuary in the Lord. You also are being built together for God's dwelling in the spirit. I want you to pay attention to something here. Notice he says here, um, when he says that we, this, this being members of God's household, verse 21, the whole building, being, right? So that's a being put together by him. And then he says, grows into a holy sanctuary in the Lord. And then he says, then you are being built. You are being built together for God's dwelling in the spirit. Now, I want you to kind of keep that thought in mind because now between week 69 and week 70, this is where we are prof prophetically. Now, when this building is complete to God's satisfaction, then I believe the church age, this age will close out with the rapture. Now, so then let's go back to now Ezekiel 39, right? And then we get into this time. Well, let me do this just for continuity's sake. I am going to go to Matthew uh, 24 so that I could uh, kind of have a little more continuity. Matthew 24, we, we got into this last time. And um, I want to slide down to um, uh, I'll pick it up at verse 14 because I'm going to make a point here. It says, this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. Now, as I said, this 
is talking about the age of the church in that this is what we're supposed to be doing, preaching the kingdom, notice this, in all the world. So now when we come to verse 15, we see a shift in thought. So then he says, so when you see the abomination that calls this desolation, spoken by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. This is Daniel's 70th week, where he, he used this exact language. So in, in Daniel chapter 9 and also Daniel chapter 12, you see this exact language. So it corresponds to Daniel's 70th week, which brings us then to the end of the age when that week is concluded. So what happens then? He says, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. So now he shifts back to Israel because remember, Daniel's 70-week prophecy is specifically about Israel. Okay? It's specifically about Israel. What is going on in Israel? And he tells them, a man uh, who is on the house, he said, I'm sorry, so when you see the abomination called desolation, those in Judea, so remember, he shifts from, in verse 14, being the gospel being preached all around the world to what? Now he talks about those in Judea, right? So he shifts back to the prophecies that specifically tell us what's going on with Israel. Those in Judea must flee to the mountains. Okay, now let's go because we see this same language here, don't we? This whole idea about this mountain. So let's read it again. Uh, verse 1, As for you, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, This is what the Lord God says. I'm against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, drive you on, and I will lead you up from the remote parts of the earth, and I will bring you against the what? Mountains of Israel. Then I will knock your bow from your left hand, in your right hand to make your arrows drop uh, from your right hand, you, all your troops, and the people who are with you will fall, what? On the mountains of Israel, okay? And I will give you as food to every kind of predatory bird and to the wild animals, and you will fall in the open fields, for I have spoken. This is the declaration of the Lord God. Now we kind of we got to we showed you some of the verses of how this is going to unfold, right? In, the, in in Zechariah chapter fourteen, Revelation chapter nineteen, when Jesus come, that He will just smite this vast army, okay? This vast army. Uh, verse six says. I will send fire against Magog and those who live securely on the coast and inland, and they will know that I am Yahweh. So I will make my name holy among my people Israel and will no longer allow it to be profaned. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh and the holy ones in Israel. And then he says, yes, it is coming and it will happen. This is the declaration of the Lord, this is the day I have spoken about. So this day of the Lord, Jesus speaks about it when he talks about um, um, the great tribulation, right? So all of this is what now Ezekiel is talking about. And when we, when, when we, in the next study, we will get more into it, obviously, uh, because there are some things, again, <laughs> that's, that's going to be fascinating about what is kind of gonna, what is going on during this period of time, okay? And I'll get more into that in the next study. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP to Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome, and I will see you in the next study.